بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again to our community. You know, today's topic is very simple, but very interesting as well. Um, the topic is Muslim youth. We're going to talk about Muslim youth issues, what they're going through, what's affecting them, and inshallah, we'll come up with some kind of advice or some ideas that we will together, inshallah, make it better. That's the idea of show tonight. Um, with me, I have two special guests. I never used that word before, special guest, because they're young and they are medical students. That's why I said they're special. All of us will run to them when we need in help. So, dear brothers and sisters, with my right, we have uh, Brother Muhammad Amin. Welcome, Brother Amin. How are you? I'm good. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Alhamdulillah, my brother. On my left, we have Brother Twaha. How are you, my brother? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. I'm doing very well, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good to have you guys. Um, I used a word special. The reason is honestly in my heart, you guys are doing an amazing job. So brother, I mean, I'm going to come to you. Okay. You know, you, <laughs> you're a medical student and you choose that subject. It's really difficult, isn't it? It's okay. I'm <laughs> you're finding it easy, are you saying? I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's manageable. Okay, mashallah. Is that your fourth year, yeah? Yeah, I'm in my fourth year now. Okay. Also, I'm going to ask you, um, did you choose that subject or someone, anyone, anyone else helped you? <laughs> no, I chose the subject. I mean, I chose the subject knowing that my, that's what my grandparents would want me to do. Oh, mashallah. But, you know, alhamdulillah, I've always, it's always been in my mind that I want to be a doctor. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I chose the subject. Alhamdulillah. You're also a, a member of Islamic Society uh, in, in, in yes, university. Yes, in my university, stuff. yeah. Um, what was your position or what do you do? So right now I'm the current rock lead. So what is that? Rock is reconnecting our community through kindness, and it's a branch of ISOC that um, it's a branch of ISOC that focuses on doing community work and helping the people in our local community here in Whitechapel. So what do you guys do in Islamic society in uh, in, in, in university? What do you guys do? How do you help so young people, or what do you Islamic do? Islamic society. Aim? Yes. So Islamic society. What are the aims of Islamic society? I think that's a good place to start. So Islamic Society, we aim to help the people on campus in our university to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure. And how do we do that? We do that by building a brotherhood. Our Islamic Society is a base for brotherhood and sisterhood on campus. And we provide alternatives to, to the people in university to, uh, for those events that people have. For example, people in university, they might, lots of people go to the pubs, for example, or to this place and that place to socialize. But we have, you know, alhamdulillah, we go to restaurants and we have our own socials. We have our own halaqas. We have our own discussions with, with the Muslims on campus. We have our own brotherhood. And that's what, what essentially is, alhamdulillah, um, ISOC is, is there for the brothers and for the sisters to help each other get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. If I could go to uh, Brother Twaha, um, recently, you guys done a, a homeless uh, food, so that's part of um, Rock, isn't it? Yeah. So what's Rock stands for? So uh, Rock stands for reconnecting our community with kindness, and Rock is part of the outreach branch of the Islamic Society. So our role is to help uh, engage uh, some of the students in our society to get out and take and bring their time and effort into helping out the most vulnerable and needy parts of our community, whether it be those that are homeless, uh, students, uh, elderly, or even taking care of the general community and the environment. So like you mentioned, uh, very recently uh, last week, we had our um, Whitechapel uh, Street Kitchen, and that's basically a homeless kitchen which we run uh, regularly, uh, once every other month or so, uh, that we hold outside of the Islamic Masjid. And what we do is we help distribute um, hot foods and drinks and as well as um, uh, give uh, sort of toiletries or, or, or services to help uh, the vulnerable members of our community. Um, so uh, we ask for donations uh, from local restaurants and cafes in the local area 
and uh, when it comes to hot meals and food uh, and drinks and then we just help distribute it out to the homeless uh, during the day. Where do you guys get the time from? Because you're, you're, uh, you're a student and I mean that topic you guys are doing, I mean the medicine is, it takes a lot of time to do it as well. Yeah. So where do you get that time? Um, alhamdulillah, I guess we're in our fourth year now and we've learned over the years to help develop our time management. But I think with these opportunities that we have for volunteering and helping out in the Islamic society, I feel like bringing your time and effort to, uh, to help out these sort of initiatives and organisations, uh, it sort of gives a more, it, it's, it's a very um, rewarding uh, aspect to it. And you sort of find the time to actually um, uh, spend your time volunteering for these initiatives. So you just, you pick it up, you could sort of pick it up, even though our roles, even though medicine is, as you said, very difficult and time consuming, you do find the time uh, to, to help out. Um, may Allah bless and may Allah accept you. Right? How many mm. volunteers do you guys have? No. So, um, uh, so based on statistics from two years ago, we had a total of over 100 volunteers across That's 16 right. different projects. All of them are medicine students? Um, not just medical students, okay. so a, a range of different students, uh, medics, dentists, uh, students that are in healthcare courses like uh, uh, global health or neuroscience, uh, a range of students. It's not just uh, medical students. Mashallah. Um, back to you again, sir. Um, you said um, ISAC, yeah? I can't pronounce it. Yeah, society. society. Yeah, I make it easy. ISAC. Okay. How many projects do you guys do? What do, what do you guys do apart from uh, helping uh, poor people? What else do you do? Okay. So, yes, our community projects, we have quite a lot of projects. So, Daha explained the White Chapel Street Kitchen, but we have many more projects, alhamdulillah. We have Guard Up, so that's basically where our sisters go to schools and teach um, uh, girls in like year 10, year 11, basic self-defense skills. Oh, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, this, like, something like that is very good. It gives the girls confidence, um, you know, just general confidence. It, um, you know, it, like, may Allah protect them, but in a bad situation, it gives them the simple things that they need to do. But we have lots of other projects like Suture the Future. So we go to youngest, like we go to schools again, and we discuss with like year 10, year 11, those age group, and we teach them basic life support skills. We teach them basic suturing skills, and you know we just encourage them to think about um, taking up a career in medicine and in these healthcare courses. Because alhamdulillah. You know, we're in a very privileged position and we also want to, you know, give back to them and, and you know, encourage them to, to do so as well from in our community, in our background, so we can have more of our community uh, representing us. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. How do, you, how do the sister role play in your uh, organization? How do they play? The role? sisters, yeah, alhamdulillah, like we just talked about um, rock, uh, sorry, the future, the future, and to Allah, like it was mainly the sisters that, you know, Mashallah. just take care of everything. And you know, and I was like, and no, I, I, food. <laughs> yeah, they, I just, I was lead, but you know, they were, they were just doing everything, alhamdulillah. But um, yeah, like in our whole organization, it's just completely even. Like we have this, the brother side and the sister side, and we both work together um, to do everything that we do, really. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. I think you guys are the role model for our next generations that are coming through. We, we struggling. My age group struggling to find a role for women sometime, honestly. Yeah. Most of the most you will find is closed. What role do they play? Oh, what the women do if you, if you ask a general person, oh, she will be cooking and she will be ironing <laughs> and she will be doing this. Yes. Really? Well, that's what our mom's done anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's what our mom's and grands and all that's done. That's but now it's changed from my generation. It's changing and you guys yeah. taking another step that yeah. they're playing a role in a position that they can lead other people to. Yeah. Men's as well. You know, they're doing yeah. the job. Um, so that's very important to know. And also, yes. I'm, I'm honestly very in, find it interesting that you guys go to schools. I gotta say again, you guys are students, but still go to school and teaching them how to do self defense. Yeah. It's amazing, sure. mashallah. So may Allah bless you guys, may Allah accept all your efforts. That's very really important to uh, um, share it with the, especially our parents. They are. Some of the parents that are going through uh, difficulties that their kids, they don't know what to choose, who are subject to choose, what to do. They don't want to do studies. They end up going in the gangs and this and that and that. When we look at you guys, mashallah, may Allah bless you guys, that you got that taking a positive role. Yeah. It's not, you're not being selfish. That's the special thing, you're not being selfish. 
So that is important. What kind of challenges do you guys face as a student? So a lot of our students or parents are probably seeing us, so they can link up with it. So, I mean, uh, Taha, what do you say? I mean, okay, you start okay. with challenge. Again, challenges. Um, okay, challenges as a student. I think, I think as you said, you touched it upon. Like, alhamdulillah, me and Taha are very privileged. We knew what we wanted to do in medicine, and you know, we were able. Allah gifted us to be able to, you know, go and achieve that, and and be, go into medical school and inshallah become doctors. But for everyone, it's not as easy. Mm. They don't know what they want to do. So I think it's a it's a big issue that people they don't know what to, they don't know what to do. Would you blame them or would you blame the school? Because if they're studying yeah. about 10, 15 years in one place and they yeah. don't come, they come out with saying, "I don't know what to do." What do you I mean? I don't it's know tough. what to do. It's tough because there's lots of different options, and you know maybe people don't get grades to give them certain options that they want to get. But I think it's important to remember that you know I think lots of people they do things just because society tells them to or just because mm. you know they're pressured to by the parents or something or because all their friends are doing it for example people don't know what they want to do but they might go to uni and study something they don't they're not interested in and they spend three years studying something half-heartedly you know they don't really care about what they're studying about they're wasting their time they're just studying something you know for the sake of getting a degree what age did you decide to you know do this or do I would say from early secondary school. I'm okay, so you already you had a fixed mind. I had a fixed mind, yeah. Alhamdulillah, okay. that this okay. is I'm going to have this and this, yeah. Alhamdulillah. But it's not. I understand. It's it's really not it's that not easy. easy for everyone. No, no, no that's true. It's, it's tough. But Toha, if I come to you, sir, yes. if I say um, the ch some of the challenges, uh, brother Mumin said. Amin said. I said Mumin. Amin. Um, do you think the parents play a role for choosing the subjects for you, or do you think they can play a role? Or do you think they, they can mess it up? What do you think? I think um, it's a good question. I think parents do play a huge role in, their, in terms of looking after their child, in terms of guiding them for their future and, and providing them with the right education and guidance and sort of uh, uh, mentoring as to what career path they'd like to go down to. But at the end of the day, it does come down to the child's individual decision to pick what career path they'd like to go to themselves. And as you know, Muhammad Amin mentioned, um, it can be very difficult for, for, for someone to pick a choice for their own, especially um, with our you know, school system. At 16, we do our GCSEs, and then we go straight to A-levels, and then 18, uh, once we've done our A-levels, uh, the whole world opens up to us in terms of uh, what degree to do, or what apprenticeship, or what sort of uh, vocation that you'd like to go into. It, it's at a very, very early age, and you might say that at that age, you know, the, ch the child's brain hasn't really fully developed yet to make those sort of big decisions on their own so you can say that the parents do play some aspect of, of, of helping If I ask out. you what role your parents played in your decision making? I would, I would say that they played a more supportive role in my decision. Okay. Um, I, I, I made the decision to apply for medicine with my own reason um, but they gave me the, all of my support all across the way and may Allah bless them for helping me throughout, mm. that, throughout that time period. Um, but they were there helping me support myself. All, Give me an example. Of role. What role? What support did they do? Um, I'd say. Um, For example, like um, I'm sure when you go home, I mean, what role your parents played? It, it's it's even like the most simplest things that my mum would just make my food for me and oh, just right. and just you know keep my mind at ease because I remember when it come to sixth form after secondary school, I was very stressful. In, in applying for medical school, but having my parents there, you know, support me with my most basic needs, you know, feeding, you know, having a shelter above my head, and, and, and just reassuring me that I can, that whatever happens to me is by Allah's will, and having them there really helped me uh, keep my mind at ease when it came to the whole uh, application process for medicine. So I, I really appreciate that. What kind of food did you make? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just the basic curries and okay, salons, you know, sure. Bengali style meals and everything. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Zazakullah for sharing that. Um, but, I mean, I'm going to come to you. You said something about your grandparents that yeah. they wanted you to be, they wanted or they had a dream that you'd yes. become a doctor. Alhamdulillah, yeah. So, are they still alive? Are your, they, yes. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Yes. So how do they see you now, mashallah? Because you're their dreams, isn't it? You, yeah. You're actually fulfilling it. Yeah. What's it like? It's very nice, alhamdulillah. I mean, it's always very nice to speak to them about what I'm doing um, in medicine, and they're always very interested. And yeah, alhamdulillah. Like, you, obviously, it's nice to, to you know, 
I guess make them proud. You can say that maybe, but you know, so trying and to be an actual doctor and not someone, you know, someone that's trying their best. But yeah. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. <laughs> the reason actually we shared, actually they do play a big role, like you said. Yeah. It's not the food only, you know, just being a support, being there positive, it yeah. helps you, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine someone, you go there and someone's nagging, you know, because you, you, they don't like the subject you choose. It actually puts you off. So Alhamdulillah, like you, uh, I'm glad you mentioned your parents and, and your grandmother, and of course your yeah, parents played a role too. Sure. The next, I'm, I'm going to ask you something is, um, my boy, he became 18, but he doesn't know what to do, to be honest with you. He's still saying, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just want to work in the office. He's, do you think it's good enough? He's 18 years old, someone, that he doesn't even know what to do, where to go, or things like that. So, what hmm. do you think? I think, you know, I think it's okay to have that idea that I have no idea what to do yet. But I think what's important is um, taking the right steps to getting an idea about what to do. So. Um, let's say, like you said with your son, he, didn't know what to, he doesn't know what to do at that age. Maybe getting some ideas about what sort of careers are out there, um, getting some experience or uh, following and listening to some uh, people in those industries um, and just getting an idea about what to do. I think that would be the first, like the right steps to take because obviously having the sort of mindset that oh, I have nothing to do I have no idea what to do, so I'm not going to do anything that might interest me. It's, it's sort of not the right idea to take, but rather go out and explore what those, you know, what's out there. And inshallah, there should be something right there that sh could interest you. And, and, and once you find that sort of passion that you, uh, and career that you want to go into, then you'll get that purpose. Because at the end of the day, we all have a purpose in this life. Yeah. And it's determined by Allah. And it, it, it's, it's our duty to find out what it is. And, 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 and try and pursue it to our best extent. Exactly, yeah. Muhammad Amin, if I come to you again, um, we find a lot of news is all about the young people going through a mental health issues, mm. depressions, mm. thinking about suicide and all I'm this sorry. kind of stuff. How much is it true? That, because you're young, yeah. you're in that position, you've seen people around yeah. you. How much is it true? No, it, it definitely is true. Uh, def it definitely is a, a real problem. Um, that people are facing and you know like I think university I've seen it I've been at university for quite a while now alhamdulillah and you know you see it it's, it really is that time in in, in young Muslims lives that is quite it's quite a big turning point because you know like growing up you might be living in your parents house you might be you know your your dean is basically with your family and you do everything but because you're in your family but now suddenly You've moved, you've moved away from your house, suddenly you're living by yourself, you're making your own decisions and you know it can be a real time of whether, whether, you're, whether or not you know how your life can go basically because now suddenly you're doing everything by yourself and you're making new friends and this and that so it's really important as you say like to look after yourself it's really important to make the right friends, uh, look for the right role models in your, in your communities because it is a real problem and you do see it and unfortunately it's something that we really need to address. Yeah. Do, you know, do you not know, I'm sure, you, uh, do you know that many people are very successful and they actually at the end they became depressed and they left everything? Do you know many people are like that? So Does it happen to uh, yeah. people of universities, I'm talking about the top ones, yeah. that they're successful yeah, but course. they're depressed and they go yes, mental. Yes, that can home. happen. I, th I think... What, what triggers yeah. then? What triggers? Because these guys are, choose to do something so good and stuff like and that. What triggers them that turn the table around that they don't want to do anything? I think, it, obviously, Islamically as well, I think it really comes down to, you know, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, you know, your intentions when you're doing things. Obviously, if your intention to do something, for example, is very hard, like some of these university degrees are very tough. So, you know, alhamdulillah, if you have an, a, a, a right intention and you make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you, you know, you, you, you seek his assistance in what you do and you do everything in the right way, then inshallah, you like, you can, uh, you know, it can be easier for you. But you know, when you're just doing something very tough with no good intention, it can become very tough, you know, mentally um, to do things. I don't know if you can add anything to our, like, so let me tell you a story. Um, 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 one time a, a mother called me and said about her son, he wanted to become a doctor. Mm. But his exam, he failed. 
when he failed, before he failed, he used to do lots of dua, lots of prayers, he was fine and everything else. When he failed, he just broke down. And he almost like left everything. Before um, prayers and nothing worked for me. And he became really depressed and he became a problematic in his home and disrespecting his mother and all that stuff. So I've been there once and I said, um, I tried to work with him so just to find out, because I used to do youth work before, and work out what's the problem. He wouldn't engage at all. So he was, well, she even said he is depressed, he's a problem, he doesn't come out of the rooms. He is friendly. So w what do you think that's the case? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's very difficult sometimes because unfortunately we do have some people that once they've been successful going throughout secondary school, sixth form, once they get to university it's another level to the and it may get to the point where some people do struggle they really do struggle and and like we said and like we said you know you know with Allah's blessing and and, and having the right intention um, if we try and put in the work in with with having that in mind things should you know work out that way and work positively but sometimes it doesn't and it's all at the end it's all part of Allah's will yeah what's what, what should their mom's role should be or parents role should be for that person what do you think I think Especially if we give too much, they probably do, it will make it problematic. We don't know the limitation. How much can we go? How much involvement can they make, the parents? Um, if you're in that position, yeah, it's difficult to say because it's after, individual things. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's hard to say because yeah. it depends on each person's circumstances. It's, it's definitely a difficult because I know people as well that you know failed exams and it hits them very hard. But you know what gets them through it is you know um, your good like friends that. again. Yeah, your good friends, you, your company, you know, um, you, need, you need to also understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners mm -hmm. and, and if you don't have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your life and, you don't, and you, you, know, you don't know that everything is for a plan and you don't know that, you know, that, um, that, you know, everything happens for the best and you don't know, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yukallibu Allah wa nafsan illa wa like no soul shall taste something more than they can bear and you have no hope and you think that your whole life is about your exams and your career and you know you forget the importance of um, you know what by our real creation and stuff everything is just focused on career it can become very I don't know tough for you because you need to have it's very important to have good friends especially of this all gets you know when you say friends we use that word quite a lot now yes. a few times we used it to make a friend what would you choose what, what's your criteria you have a successful friends yeah I think one of the most common ways in which people judge a person is by who they hang around and associate themselves with so picking like-minded individuals that you'd like to replicate in terms of your character so having someone with good character um, and obviously as us as Muslim having someone that is very conscious of Allah and is uh, uh, very straight uh, steadfast in their deen um, and, and, and being around someone that you're, you're happy to you know uh, show your faith around in terms of you know being able to pray with them, um, staying away from bad things with them, and and and, and having someone that's just like like-minded in that sense. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major criteria that I have in terms of picking my friends. Alhamdulillah. Dear brother and sister, we're going to go for a small break. Inshallah, stay with us. I'll see you after the break. Wassalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our community. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again. So we were talking about friends before we went to break, so we start with friends again. Um, those two young men, mashallah, are very mature and um, they're, mashallah, they're successful as well. So if you have young people watching or not in the room, try to bring them in so they can learn something from them, inshallah. I want to go back to um, Muhammad Taha again. Muhammad Taha, you were talking about friends. Yeah. Um, were you practicing before or you became practicing or has anyone helped you if you could share that? I think uh, before my time in university back in secretary in sixth form, I, I can admit that my, my dean wasn't as strong as it is now. But I think after joining the Islamic Society and picking my right friends in, in university, um, I think that that has helped me, you know, provide inspiration in boosting my iman and, and, and my faith a lot more. And alhamdulillah, um, since my time in sixth form and my time right now, I, it's been improved quite a lot now. And I feel a lot more practicing 
than when I was before. So did you choose your friends that, are you saying you choose your friends when you went to university? Yeah, or I think. Couldn't I, you do that before when you were young? I, or you didn't have that taste? It, 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 was, it was more the sense of where I was brought up. Um, so I lived in South London. I, I was in a school where there was not a lot of Muslims. There was a lot of non-Muslims in my school. And it was very difficult to find a sort of Muslim role model or someone, some friends that I could look up to in terms of uh, practicing my faith because it, I felt a bit shy in practicing my faith around my friends during my time at sixth form in school. But after I came into university, um, I had this sort of idea in mind that I'd like to pick, you know, a good group of friends that I'd be happy to practice my faith around. Um, and as a result, it's improved my um, faith and iman quite a lot, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you. Um, Brother Amin. You know, like when we talked about um, a lot of young people now, we're going to talk about because the young people are looking up to you guys. Um, in my group, uh, my age group, um, I became practicing when I was 25, man. Mm. It's too late, to be honest with you. I could have been. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless. I, I hope he accepts my stuff. You know, the young people actually, they're struggling with identity. And a lot of people you will find, they won't want to say, my name is Muhammad. They won't say it they will hide away and find mm. something else to say more this that you know whatever mm. they will make a show and make it more look like western you know western names um. or something goes easy and they would shy to say or they won't even say i'm muslim because they don't they feel i don't have to say it yeah i am who i am so you know that identity crisis you we have yeah do you think that young people are going through that did you get, get through that as well um Alhamdulillah, I wouldn't really say I've been through a, a real identity crisis in that way. It, I think it, it's easy for us in our situation. Is it because you're family or you are? You know, also we're from East London. There's so many Muslims okay. here. But I understand that I think this would be a particular problem, perhaps in other parts of England where there aren't so many Muslims. And, you know, going through, you know, this whole problem right now, maybe. Yeah, but remember, you know, yeah, in East London, we have a lot of yeah. drugs. We've got a lot of uh, gangs, Muslim England. gang, the okay. drugs, the boys are selling yeah. drugs, they're taking drugs. Alcoholic, and yeah. you name them. They, all, they I think name I, them. Okay, I know. But we've they, discussed this already as well. But I, I do think it, a lot of it comes down to role models and friends, and you know, especially friends. I remember hadith. So Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, so, "It's so, so beautiful, beautifully put, that you know, you're, you're f choose your friends because, like, a bad friend is like a what's it? A bad friend is like a, a blacksmith. You know, you spend time with that person." And, but you're going to have a bad smell, you're going to get dirty. So even if you think, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to spend time with him, but I'm not going to do what he does. Being in that company is going to rub off on you. Sooner or later it's going to rub off on you. If you make friends that are in gangs, you make friends that do drugs, you make friends that drink alcohol, that's got, sooner or later that's going to have an effect on you. But what do you want? You want to make friends that's a perfume seller. You want to make friends that even if you're with them and, they and you're in their company, so even, um, let's say you don't do things straight away, they might pray Salah, they might read loads of Qur'an, and you might not be able to read as much Qur'an as them, but being in their company is going to help you. Because what sort of friends do we want? Do we want friends that are going to tell us when it's Salah time, we need to pray? He's going to ask us, were you able to uh, recite Qur'an today? He's going to see when we're sinning and tell, tell us, you know, bro, you should, nicely, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. Or do we want friends that, you know, um, when it's Salah time, you're shy to pray in front of them because you're worried about what they're going to say. You know, they tell you, they keep telling you, oh, it's just, it's just this, it's just that, you know. They encourage you to, take, uh, to do bad things like uh, smoke cigarettes or um, having drugs and stuff. Like, it comes down to who you choose as your friends. And it's, it's a big thing in, our, in, in, uni in university because sometimes maybe it's unfair. We think people go to university and the Islam is ruined. But I know so many people that, as Daha is an example of that, they come to uni and they meet brothers, they go to, a, uh, they go to an ISOC event, they, go, they happen to meet a brother. And you know, they might not have been that practicing, but it's at uni that they suddenly, you know, their iman increases and they do amazing things at university. I know brothers who weren't that practicing, but by the end of the uni, they, they were happy with the Quran. They had studied and learned Arabic fluently. You know, it's, it's, we just talk about uni here, but it can be t taken past uni and like through all of life. No, it's just it's so important to make the right friends have the right mo role models and you know we can go even further like the role models that our society takes right now it's not the best ones you know sports stars um, musicians it's not the best
But as Muslims, who is the best role model? Of course, it's Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so many of us, myself included, you know, first all this advice goes to myself. <laughs> but you know, do we spend enough time learning the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Do true. we spend enough time learning about the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? You know, looking at the real model, role models, the real legends of the past. Because, you know, these are the people we really need to emulate, we really need to um, be like, not like the people that we see. So, so not like, um, imagine, majority of the young people, or my gener not my generation, even your generation, is, but we go to maktabs, okay? Of course, yeah. We go to maktab or masjid and, and do our um, two hours reading um, Quran or Tajbid or this and that. That's enough, for, that, that's how much they learn. Mm. So when they come out, those young people, they don't have not knowledge of Islam or life yeah, of the Islam. Prophet or even the basic Quranic knowledge as well. I, so do you think we are failing? Do you think we I are don't. failing to teach young people? I think, I understand what you're saying. I, I think from my limited perspective, I think there is a, a slight problem in our community, you know? Like, like, alhamdulillah, we do so much well. Like, the maktab system we have is amazing. So many Muslims, you know, um, the children and stuff, they grow up and it's, everyone learns about Islam. And it's something that I think we, sometimes we don't appreciate, that we, you know, we grow up um, learning the basics of our deen. It's not something that everyone has a system like this that every child learns. But at the same time, there's, there are things that we can improve. Mm -hmm. There's so much focus, for example, in our whole community, I feel, about, you know, reciting the Qur'an, reciting How the much Quran. did you learn in Maktab, do you think? Myself? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, like, I learned Did they the teach basics. you about the Prophet? Did they teach you life yes, of the Prophet? Yeah, they, did they, they teach us the basics just of the, uh, the seerah, they teach seerah, they teach tahriq, they teach um, a, a, a qaid, like manners, they teach lots of things, alhamdulillah. But this what, is one, yeah. Was it Maktab or was it Madrasha? Myself, um, I actually, t as myself personally, uh, maktab wise, I actually had a teacher come to my house. Okay. But they, they taught the same curriculum. And then, okay. and then afterwards, I also went to a madrasa. Um, and, uh, and, you know, but it's, it's very much the same thing as what I learned. Alhamdulillah, they teach all the basics very well. But just one thing I, I did want to just add on, and it's something I think all of us can, you know, take, take on, is that there's such a focus in our community of reciting the Quran, or if that, our Qur'an is sometimes in our households is treated like an artifact, you know, it's kept on the shelf. But if it's not kept as an artifact, we just recite it, we recite it. Looking inside, we recite it, you don't. But we, there's no, not much effort to really understand what the Qur'an is actually telling us. Like, it's a guide for us. Like, if our community, if our youth were to really use the Qur'an as a stepping stone, to really, you know, try to understand the Qur'an, take it take out the guidance from the Qur'an, it would be so, it would be so much better for us. Because, you know, it's, sorry for going on. No, no, but it's just like, you know, there was a beautiful, someone uh, told, you know, it was sharing a reminder and he put it quite nicely. It's like, let's say someone that you really loved wrote a letter to you and, you know, it basically gave you an advice about how to do something very well. Let's say, you, okay, let's just say, for example, um, you want to become a footballer and someone's given you a, a note and, you know, a, a letter and said, you'd follow this and you'll definitely become the best football in the world, 100%. I think everyone would read that, treasure that, look over that every day, you know what I mean? But with the Qur'an, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the speech of Allah sure. subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He's given us a guide exactly how to succeed in this life and the next life. And it's something that many of us, myself included, like I need to improve as well. You know, we don't we spend like no time, you know, actually trying to understand what Allah, our Creator is telling us. I mean, it's quite, it's, it's not very good. But I mean, alhamdulillah, that's something we need to like f focus on and encourage our community to really, to sure. really spend more time on that. I want to come to you. Um, I want to talk about the Prophet. I'm going to come to you because I think I want you to uh, share a glimpse of his life. That would be interesting to know. I'm going to ask you because we talked about Maktab because uh, um, I'm also a Bangladeshi like yourself as well. So you know the Maktab we go to, the Masjid we go to. Normally you read Qaeda and your Sifara and your Quran and yeah. after two, three, five years maybe, I don't know, you go home and that's it. Everything is finished. So we've all been through that. Actually you don't learn anything. I don't know how much you learned. But it doesn't give you the sweetness of Islam or sweetness of the Prophet or sweetness about anything. It just tells you basic how to read and that's it. Do you think it's enough for someone to lead his life towards Islam? I think with my... Or do you think we should change? I think with my experience was uh, at an early age from about seven or eight, I went to Madrasa 
and oh, then I left. Allah. But then I left uh, soon after, and then I had a home teacher uh, that followed similarly to the maktab. But I only had the experience of learning how to recite the Quran, going through the whole Quran, and learning some du'as and, and, and surahs on the side. But I never really had that um, opportunity to actually understand uh, what the Quran was saying and how to apply it into my everyday life. I never had the um, uh, experience of learning about the, the life of the Prophet or, or, or any idea of uh, you know, Aqidah or Fiqh. I never really learned that before I went into university. But it was only after university and after joining the Islamic Society where I started to um, delve deeper, deeper into my religion and, and understanding more about, about, about the but background. That means there's something wrong here. You know? Imagine you're lucky when, when you were old enough in university you met people and you learned. If you didn't have that, then everything goes into uh, a, a different directions, isn't it? Yeah. So we're talking about young people. They're ending up in drugs. They're yeah. ending up in gang. They're ending up in, uh, in knife crime, all this kind of stuff. The Muslims. Yeah, see, it's very sad that your religion says not to do it. And your ideals and values and everything against crime and all this kind of stuff. But these people are doing it. But they go to maktabs and everything. So we're not giving them the right information, I think. That I think... It's, Young people, they'll learn quick, isn't it? Yeah. You, if those kids go into Maktou for five years, they should have learned the basics. But you don't do this, this, this. Message is there. Basic messages are there. You, you do enough of this. But I think we are lacking in this one. What do you? I think there's so many aspects. I think with my experience and with Mohammed Amin's experience, it's very contrasting as to how we uh, went about in developing our you know, Islamic knowledge. And I think with the issue of the youth today about with the current system of, of, of the Maktou, I think there's a lot of vulnerabilities in which students, uh, uh, younger people can, can fall trap under. And one of those major issues is social media and the idea of success. One more thing, you know your teacher was teaching, did he teach in English or did he teach in Bengali? Uh, Bengali. Did Bengali. you understand him uh, properly? Yeah, fairly, 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 fairly. properly, under, yeah, I most of the time. 5%, 10%? Uh, like 40, 50, 30, 40, 50 percent, yeah. Okay, if it's 30 percent, can you imagine? It? Yeah. I know, so, it, it so makes we, need, we need to find some uh, solution. And that's, yeah. that's another issue, yeah. Do you get me? I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I think, uh, I think, I think they really are trying to make a shift right now in the Majesta system. But I, I think as, you're, as you say, I think there does definitely, for the children, as you say, they go into knife crimes, they go into drugs, all this stuff. But why are they doing that? Because they maybe perhaps at that stage they don't really care about the religion like perhaps at that stage they don't really worry too much about what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to do but why is that but they've been taught in maktab you think but why is that we taught them we've done what we can maybe they've been taught to learn the religion and they've been taught um, you know exactly uh, what to do just do this do that do that and we and this is what we believe this is this but have they been taught to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly? Has that love Thank of Allah and argument. the love of the Prophet sallallahu really been brought into their minds? Like when they're... You want to say fifth, yeah. Oh, go on, you sorry, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. It's something that I experienced as well. I think what I was taught when I was at a young age was just learning about the do's and don'ts of Islam. Don't do this, don't do that. It's, you know, haram, halal. And, and I never really got the understanding of learning how to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's even in the way in which the Quran is structured in itself. The first that in the beginning of the Quran is more about learning about the love of Allah and, and understanding more about Him exactly. and then towards the later end, later end of the Quran it's more about the jurisprudence and what's you know, right and wrong that's more towards the end but in the beginning you're, you're learning more about the love of Allah exactly. and I think that's, there should be a more focus especially towards the earlier ages about building our relationship and love of Allah rather than going because what's know, gonna happen? Deep. You're gonna have people that do what they do. What they don't. They do the right things and they don't do the wrong things in front of their parents. But then what happens when they leave their parents? Mm. If they're doing everything for the sake of their parents and their community, what happens when they leave? What happens when they don't care about what their family says to them anymore? You know, they're gonna go astray. Inshallah, may Allah protect them. But if they have the love from Allah from the beginning and they they do the right things for the sake of Allah and they stay away from the wrong things for the sake of Allah and that's what's ingrained in their mind from a young age then inshallah when they, when, when they become older that's, that's what's going to stay with them and they're going to like inshallah stay on the right path I remember one of the, uh, one of the uh, scholar actually um, or female scholar actually she said I think she was river as well uh, it really touched my uh, thingy attention like she said look in Muslim communities when they talk to young people like you said, don't and don't and don't and don't. Far enough, far enough, far enough. Yeah. Don't do this, don't do exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah. And um, it's more like if you do this, you're going to get this punished. Mm -hmm. It's all punishment, all punishment, punishment, punishment. 
you know? Okay. You put fear in someone's heart, especially mm. young people. How would you love someone if, so, if you fear that person? You're going to run mm. away from it, that person, isn't it? Normally, mm. if you hate, or if you know that person would hit you or do something to you, punish you, you run away from that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. But when you put love in it, that person loves you, he doesn't want you to do that, that will harm someone. So once you put love of Allah into your young person's heart, then slowly he will come back to it. So I think we are struggling here, or the message is getting wrong actually, mm -hmm. by sometimes from the members, some from the khutbah, so that you fear Allah and fear Allah, fear Allah, fear Allah. He'll punish you, he'll punish you, he'll punish you, he'll punish you. But yeah. there is no mercy, we don't talk about mercy a lot. Of course. We don't talk about love of Allah a lot. We don't talk about friendship with Allah a lot. So actually we need to balance it, isn't it? We fear Allah because we don't, exactly. I don't want to upset him. It's very important. So I think we, sh we, we, we need to shift from, uh, from uh, I don't know, I've grown up in Bangladesh, you know, from Asian community. So in their system, they always put fear in you that yeah. don't do that. Exactly. You have this. It's very important to have a good balance, you know, um, fear of Allah and fear of his punishments. It's important, otherwise you become complacent. If you only know about the mercy and you don't know about the fear, What's going to happen? You're going to be you're going to become complacent, and you do the wrong things, and you think, oh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is merciful. But at the same time, if you only, uh, as you say, you only know about the fear side of things, and you don't know about the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, then you, as you say, you're going to sort of fear, 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 and you're not going to you're going to dislike the religion, and and you know you think this thing is just giving me rules to live by. What's the point? But, so it's important to have that balance, mercy and fear. So, you know, when you're feeling uh, you want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's say you have sinned, you need to know the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask for forgiveness. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But then when you are sinning, you need to know, um, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, a, is uh, you know, you will forgive you. Punishment. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's, very, it's very important, as you said, f um, having that balance of fear, and uh, been hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, I'm going to touch on uh, khutbah now because I know because it's quite interesting to find you guys uh, because um, I think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> when we go to khutbah, if it's not in English, we're not going to criticize them, but we just want to share our thoughts. If it's not in English, how much do you understand the khutbah? I think so. With my experience, so some most, not all most. most there are lots of Muslims still, there's not khutbah in English. It's yeah. in uh, Bengali or Urdu in your case and other, other, other things. Or the ulama, uh, the imam is probably from back home. Yeah. And he doesn't know the uh, um, society yeah. here very well. How much do you genuinely understand that khutbah if it's not in English? Um, so with my local masjid, the khutbah is only done in Arabic. And so my understanding of the whole khutbah in itself, it's very limited. But in university, with the students that lead the khutbah, they offer um, the khutbah in English and they pick very useful topics to discuss mm -hmm. during the khutbah that can sort of relate back to me very well. And you're right, especially with the youth as well. And it's, you could t say it's also a cultural issue as well in terms of language barriers. But in the end, if we don't offer the khutbah in a way in which they can, the students can understand it, how can they you know, reflect upon it and take any lessons from it? Because, you know, just doing the same thing every Friday, reciting the khutbah in a language that they don't understand, they're just going to go to the Jummah just for the sake of it and, and not actually, you know, take any yeah. good in, you know, take home points from it. Um, so I agree there should be like having English, like having the khutbah done in English, especially for the youth, yeah. is very important. Time. I think, yeah, just to... If the options are open, yeah. these are options that you could do in khutbah in English. I know there are different opinions, I, I know, agree, that's I just said. but if careful, the options yeah. are open, can yeah. you imagine how much benefit is getting those young yeah, people? Yeah, I understand. Or obviously they don't have to be young. The whole point of a khutbah anyone. is to obviously to adjust yeah. the people and then you teach them. But as you said, that there is a difference of opinion, or I don't want to get into, this, into the matter, but there's a difference of opinion that it needs to be in Arabic or not. But I, could, I think before the Arabic khutbah, usually they give a talk to the community in English, but then perhaps people that know that's not the real khutbah, so I don't yeah. have to come to that. Yeah. So, but I think um, like the way ELM do it is very nice. Um, and as you say, like in uni, we have our khutbah in English. It's increasing, it's, mashallah. It's, very, it's increasing. Yeah. It's coming uh, it's, in, in a good form. Because of course, the um, whole point is to address the people and to teach the people. So you want to speak in a language that they understand. It, obviously, it makes sense. But, um, okay. Mashallah. No, no, no. I mean, for, for you, you guys to come up with... with, with um, your voice is more important than my voice. 
because you guys are going to lead in the future, not me. Do you get me? So if you come up with these ideas now, look, we need to balance the system. We need to balance it. If it's allowed, let's have another opinion. We, 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 don't, we just don't have to be stuck in one opinion mm. because it's not benefiting nobody. I understand. And it's, 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 even, it's not even a saying, it's a written khutbah, you get them in and out, mm. and that's it. It's all done. Someone wrote it for yeah, you, and, you're doing it and you're just getting done. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, like, as you say, like, and in our uni, we have it in English, and we very carefully pick the topics, you know, like, to, uh, you know, to, for the derbia of our students, and to develop them and teach them the important things. And so there's a lot of... I'm going to ask you a difficult question now, because the people will ask anyway, so I'm going to ask you now. The question is, um, so far you guys are doing very successful, but there's some of our, uh, my age group or older group, they'll okay. probably say, okay, so they're working together, men and women to working together, students I'm talking about. Okay. Would that be a fitna? Uh, <laughs> you know, do, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? Because, because mashallah, sisters are taking lead, you guys are taking lead, you're working yes. together. Um, they would say, look, this is a very uh, silly argument, to I be understand. honest with you. It's silly because you, you guys are students. Yeah. You do it. If you can do study together, why can't mm. you do community work together? Why not? What's wrong with that? Why can't yeah. you go to pray together? What's wrong with that? I understand. So the people are asking questions, the ones who ask questions normally, yeah. they're okay with studies, yeah. they're okay with what benefits them, but when it comes. So now if, if it doesn't, they come up with ideas. Um, okay, but what if something happens? What do you mean if yeah. something happens? I mean, how would yeah, you answer that? Us, but, you know, um, everything that we do, especially okay, if we go from our Islamic society or like working together in our, in our situation, like, we try our best to do everything with proper professionalism and proper etiquette and manners. And yes, we need to work together. There's a need for us to work together in many situations, as we said, like doing these projects. Like the brothers and sisters need to work together on that and do certain things together. But there's certain things. I think this will take time, isn't it? So I'm going to Perhaps. come back to you after. Yeah, inshallah, I'll come back to you. Okay. Dear brothers and sisters, stay with us. You're getting really serious now, inshallah. <laughs> Don't go too far. I'll see you after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. आपना रहते हैं आवार कम्युनिटी। अस्सलामुअलैकुम रहमतुल्लाह डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स वेलकम बैक अगेन। वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रोल्स ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स प्ले इन इन देयर प्रोजेक्ट्स। सो इट्स रियली इम्पोर्टेंट टू नो हाउ दे डू इट बिकॉज़ वी टॉकिंग अबाउट आल्सो Islam is well in a role model of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So I just wanted to ask the brother again that how do they work in universities? Um, playing the similar role as well. So in this way we all learn, you know, it's very important that we work together and we are studying together. Why don't, why can't we work together? Why can't we go um, to mosque together as well? Why not? So there are lots of mosques, mashallah, now that are open up for the sisters. That's brilliant. If they go to pray with us, where are they going to go? They're going to end up somewhere else. Where are they going to go? And then we complain, oh, they don't pray, they don't do this, they don't do that. Yeah, it, it didn't give no space for them. Oh, they're not doing good in education. Yeah, we didn't give no space to them. We don't even advise them to do studies. How many Molanas we made, the sister Molanas we made? How many scholars do we have? We keep complaining that our men are doing, taking the lead. Yeah, because we are putting effort for the men. We're not putting effort for the sisters. You know, subhanAllah, they do amazing stuff. So let's hear it from the brothers, inshallah. Muhammad Amin, uh, back to you again. I know I'm putting you in the spotlight. No. I didn't tell you I'm going to ask you these kind of questions. But I just want to know, brother, that how do you guys do it, those projects together? So imagine Rock, you're doing it yeah. together. You're taking the lead, and yeah. also sisters are playing a role. How do you guys do it? Okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. In, I, in our ISOC, it's very... Um, we have the brothers and we have the sisters. And obviously, we have lots of Muslim sisters on campus, lots of brothers and Muslims on campus. And, you know, we all need the same needs, you know? We all need development. We all need... Um, uh, you know, sisterhood, brotherhood is important. Our events, we're not mixed, as in there's, we have the brothers' events and we have sisters' events. But then, as you say, for projects like Rock, we have, um, we get, there's only one event, and both brothers and sisters is important that they both take in part. So, for events like this, you know, we work with professionalism, um, we, we work together when there is a need, we do things in, in the right way that we don't, it's not like, you know, we're working together, now we're talking to each other all the time and we're best friends. We keep that professional relationship, 
because you know we're both what's our goal we're working together but to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're not working together you know to find the wife or do this and that and bad intentions we we try our best to have to stay professional the boys keep each other in check the girls keep each other keep each other in check but even that it's only really on the day there there isn't that much collaboration routine though i guess there is but you know we we work together in the, the in the right way uh, if that's a thing alhamdulillah <laughs> no no that is the right way i think um brother twaha uh, um not similar question but you know mashallah their their mosques are opening up to sisters the women's the children and everything else. There was a time that even the children were not allowed in the mosque. The little ones. Can you remember? I don't know if it still happened now. I know lots of one of the boys actually, he left the religion because someone said something really bad to him when he was young. And he left the religion. And mashallah, he came back and done shahada again. And he told us why he left. Alhamdulillah. So, you know, little <laughs> things, we don't understand. Little things can change people's life in a good way or in a bad way. Like sisters. A lot of them, they can't even pray. They haven't seen inside the mosque. How many women sit inside the mosque? They haven't. But if you look at the life of the Prophet wasallam, they had one mosque. And women were in the same mosque. You know, they were at the back and men were at the front. That was the system then. Mm. One mosque, not barrier at all. And now it's like we become much... It's like we understand more than the, the Prophet. Do you get me? Sometimes we act like, no, you should be like that. Why? Blah, 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 blah. You look at the, what's happening to our communities. It's divided in, divided in uh, fake issues, divided in all kinds of issues. But subhanAllah, you guys are growing up in a, in a difficult time. It's end of time, to be honest with you, fitna time. And now you can't even practice your religion well. Within the Muslim environment, that's the problem. Mm. So tell me... Um, how would we make it easy for you guys when you grow up that you could go with your wife in the mosque and your children? What do you think we should do? That's a very good question. Um, I think when it comes to the issue with you know, mosque accepting sisters and children to pray in the mosque, I know with my local mosque, we still only have brothers. And I think with, some, with the main issue of that is some mosques simply might not have the space or okay. capacity to take in sisters and kids as well. That's so I think having a, a, a sort of, it's, it's more of an economic drive into okay. help developing my mosque to become large enough to have that capacity to allow sister, uh, sisters and kids in. I think that's something that we as a community should take part in, as well as, you know, encouraging our government uh, to help get involved in, in developing these spaces because this is where we pray, where, where we're praying. And we have a right to express our religion by praying at these, at these mosques, but if we don't have the space to allow, you know, to get our sisters in, then you know, we're not doing a good thing for them. And that's true. I think when it comes to doing the project, imagine yeah. we're talking about sisters now, mashallah, uh, because uh, they are somehow left out somewhere, like my mom's age group. Yeah, I'm talking about um, when you guys do a project, you know, who does the, all the idea, sisters group or, or the brothers group? Um, it's it's a collaborative effort. Um, because they're not less than nobody. Yeah. They're not less than me. Yeah. They're better than us. Subhanallah, like they, yeah, they, they, you know, the they have much, much... It's for use, subhanallah. Yeah. It's for use. And we are still backward, I would say, that they won't understand how I do. What do you mean? We might have experience in one field. Subhanallah, they're going to have experience in another field. Yeah. So, mashallah, you guys has made something very practical. You're working together, you're doing it together. And why not? SubhanAllah, why not working together? What's wrong with that? Yeah. They've got a hijab on. So, so even if they don't have hijab on, so what? You know, it's their choice. Yeah. It's their choice to choose religion. It's their choice to choose Allah. It's up to them totally. Allah's going to test them. This is the test. Mm. Yeah. You can't force do anyone to do anything, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So it's always better to have choice and follow. That's when they love Allah because they choose to Exactly. Send that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Not force mm. to fulfill something else. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually in, uh, not very far away uh, to finish off. I want to I wanna add something else because we've been really um, catching uh, big topics to be honest with you. Okay. Do you guys find difficult following fiqh issues? <laughs> you know why? Because there are a lot of new Muslims. Yeah. New Muslims. Uh, a, a Dawa group I work with, mashallah, within the last two years, we had 180 
people took shahada, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. They complain, they go to different mosques and they find different way of doing things. He learns something here mm -hmm. and he goes to another mosque and they say, no, 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 this is better. You try my way, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> Even the language. So they, they're struggling, to be honest with you. Why can't we find a common ground? I, I, think, I think you're right. There's, you, you our community really gets caught up on these silly things, pick issues, I'll be honest. So, so um, imagine you're from Gujarat, right? You're from Gujarat, yes, mashallah. Yes. A, good, a blessing place. I'm from Bangladesh. Look at the food, mm. the diversity of the foods. Yes. I'm, you might not like my food. I might not like your food. It doesn't mean I hate you. Yes. You might not like the style I like. It doesn't have to be. Allah has created something so uniquely, of so course. different, so you like it. Say, imagine all the flowers are white. Would you like flowers? No, you won't like it. If yes. everyone was the same color, all, of, all, the, all the humans are, would you like it? No. Allah has, that's his choice. He done it for us. Mm. We need to appreciate that. So we don't appreciate the, your understanding. Say, no, 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 my understanding is better. Brother, if you, if you say you're better, show me a reference. Yes. No one can be better than the Prophet. So we go exactly. back to him straight again. If he said it, if he done it, I'm willing to do it. It's better, isn't it? And you know, naturally there's difference. Of, there's going to be difference of opinions on certain matters. And you know, alham alhamdulillah, it's a blessing in many ways. He is there's a blessing, there is difference, to be honest. There's difference of opinions. But it's very silly, as you say, to get caught up on these things. And you know, the best advice is, you know, just follow someone and, you know, alhamdulillah, this is my way. Alhamdulillah, that's your way. No need to fight, no be need it. to argue, you know. It is what it is. Alhamdulillah. Okay, my brother, I'm going to ask you something else now. I'm going to talk about food now because food is quite important. Okay. Because in our homes, we, we, we realize, actually, my, I've got three boys. They've yes. grown up, mashallah. So we realize, actually, they don't like the food I have. I like. Okay, I understand. They would say rice and curry probably once in a day. Okay. And so, you, so the daytime, we usually have rice and curry. Yes. And the evenings, they would make it. So they would want... Um, uh, um, Turkish food, they want English uh, okay. uh, breakfast, they would want, even, even the night time we have English breakfast as well, sometimes, because yeah. they could make this one yeah, easy. Yeah. So the food became an issue. Okay. Is that a good or bad? I don't know. So if you could tell me what food you like and your mum makes something, how do, you, how do you respond to that? Alhamdulillah, I like all the food my mum makes. <laughs> no, 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 come on, be honest. <laughs> be honest. Um, no, I'm being honest, seriously. Okay. Like, Alhamdulillah, it's not like my mum makes like food I don't like all the time. How often do you have the curry? Do, do you guys have curry or what? Uh, yeah, we have curry pita. like uh, maybe once or twice a week. But it's not like we don't, we don't come from one of those traditional households, I guess. That you know, from uh, we have first generation day, that Rise have every day. day. No, no, no. Alhamdulillah. So I think I'm from quite a privileged position where Alhamdulillah, I always like the food that my mom makes. But perhaps you can ask Tahab. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll go to, to Tahab because I, I know we, are, we have the same culture. As well. So what kind of food do you guys have normally? I don't know, different things, like, um, like today, making like a casserole dish, or that is pasta, or day, that's or, not, come on, that's or, not traditional. Okay, fair enough, pasta, pasta is not or like, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, as you say, one day, like, Turkish food, one day, Chinese food, um, one day... For example, also, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean that, but I know, but, you know, yeah. but fish and chips is all mostly that you guys uh, like... Uh, um, or probably grilled food you yes. guys like probably yeah, grilled food or knows. probably it's sandwich everything. you guys like yeah, so yeah, yeah. how do you tell mommy mommy listen your food is fine yes. but i also like i tell you that i tell you how it's funny do you i tease my i tease my family a lot actually okay. recently <laughs> recently i don't know if you know you know that somali restaurant al kaf are you aware there's, there's a Somali restaurant close by and suddenly I'll come to uni and we, it's a thing that us brothers, we go to al Kaf and we eat Somali food. And obviously Somali food is, to us in our community, is quite something different, you know? Yeah. I mean, most people don't have it, so they think it's quite strange. So I like to tease them a little bit, saying, you know, this, yeah, Somali food is much nicer. <laughs> and they will think, Somali food, but yeah. So they're um, getting used to it then, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, like... Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Kali like, rice. <laughs> <laughs> go to Taha, please. <laughs> Taha, isn't it, like, um, be honest, actually. Um, um, for me, it's not a problem. My kids, um, I say, okay, fine, if you want to have other food, you cook that food. So we cook, me and my wife, we cook daytime, always, and they do the evening food. So they could do chicken, they could do meat, they could do kebab, they could do any other thing. Or order it, no problem, they're working, so order it. So we've done it like that. Yeah. It, we, I don't want to struggle. So we don't even push them for rice and curry in the evenings. They will do that. Yeah. 
some houses they won't do it. They will say, no, you have to have it. They will force you to have it. it means we're all having it, you've got to have it. Yeah. But we've got to understand the taste. You know, if, if you've grown up in this country, your taste will be different yeah. than someone grown up in back home. Yeah. And especially women, sisters, they, have, they haven't learned like that. You know, they can't cook the way mom, moms do. We have to be honest with them. Yeah. So we have to make ease for them too. So do you have a struggle in, in the food? Um, I can say 100% certainty that every dish that my mom has made, I've, I've always appreciated it. Mahindra. I enjoyed it, alhamdulillah. Okay. And with us, especially with Bengalis, um, there's always like, for me, I'm always having rice and curry at least once a day. Yeah. Um, but quite recently, in the past few years, um, I've been trying to encourage a shift towards trying other cuisines, oh. not for the sake of taste, but for the sake of health. Mm. Because I can, I do understand that with our cuisines, you know, our salons and okay, diet. Before you go, okay, no, no, I, okay. I forgot. I've actually forgot that you guys do medicine. You know the food we have, rice yeah. and yeah. curry. Yeah, it's not all that healthy, is it? Well, it, it it does depend on how we make it. But obviously, with some of the ingredients we use, especially with like ghee and and, and oil, it it does add a lot of fat and saturated fat in our diets, and it can, especially with uh, Bengalis in particular, we are at a much higher risk of getting, you know. Uh, cardiovascular disease or diabetes. We have that already, too much. Yeah. And diabetes is already there. Yeah. I wanted to speak about this actually. Yeah. And, but our <laughs> diet plays a role in that quite a lot Big as well. And that's why my shift, why my encouragement of trying other cuisines isn't more towards the basis of taste because I'm the, like, my, my palate is quite wide and varied and I don't mind having anything. But it's just more towards the sake of health. And that's why I try and encourage to have different different things, especially with ordering out and takeaways. I, I must say, we quite recently we have been doing that quite a lot, especially with you know COVID recently. It, it made us want to eat out a lot more, um, but it does it did become a detriment to my health in the sense of putting on more weight and feeling a little more lazy and lethargic. So that's why I've been trying to encourage even making more healthier options uh, in terms of uh, healthier foods or just trying out healthier foods and other cuisines. But is it better to eat rice and curry at night time? Um, if you have diabetes, so just just just, advice, just a disclosure. I'm not a doctor yet. I'm okay, not. Okay. I'm not a professional. I can't. Okay, I can't offer any advice okay. at all. Um, and and in in his, if you have any ideas, you'd want to talk to your G, uh, GP about this. But in terms of uh, diabetics and like people trying to manage their weight, um, it's all about understanding, how, being aware of how much you eat and how much you put into your body, and just counting how much you because sometimes people especially like uh, when it comes to ha me having my curry and rice sometimes i just put however much i want onto my plate without realizing wow oh, okay. i put way too much and i'll still have it anyways because i have a very big big appetite but it, it happens with my how do you say no to mom see i don't want to mom, mom mom no how do you see it? um i how just do you convince her not to give you more i i, I just say to i'll just say you know i, I don't want to eat too much I, i'll have a, either a smaller plate or i just like i'm watching my weight and obviously my mom does <laughs> come back and say oh really oh, do you not enjoy my food and like no no it's not even that it's just for the sake of health and i and i try and encourage my mom as well to have uh, smaller portions of, her, uh, of, of meals as well because uh, it's a very, very big problem in our community yeah. you know our house is, 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 is yeah it's very bad and even as it is you know a South Asian community even if we were very healthy we, we still well I don't know but we have let's just say we have we're six times more likely to get diabetes than normal people we're about 50% more likely to have a heart attack or stroke so we need to look after ourselves okay we can't control that we're do, do you think because of food it's, a, it's one of many of factors. Okay, so we can't control where we're from. We can't control our genes. But what can we control? Our diet, our exercise, um, how, whether or not we're fat, like uh, obesity and smoking. These are the main things we can control. So we need to make sure that we um, are doing, you know, we need to make sure we keep on top of all those things. Uh, diet, make sure we have less salt in our food, less, oil, less, less oily food, fried food, we cut that down. Um, let portion size we cut that down, you know, we need to be more healthy in our choices. Um, exercise is very important. It's, it's, it's a, I think it's a huge problem in our community, especially in our women, but even yeah. our youngsters nowadays. Why? Because, sorry, they, young, before all the youngsters, we'd always play football, we'd always do exercise, we'd always, mm. that would be how we, um, you know, pass time. But now, as you know, social media, gaming, people are becoming less and less active and it's becoming a huge problem. And then, of course, our women as well. We know how much exercise are we supposed to do? 30 minutes a day. Uh, exercise, on average, 
30 minutes a day and what does it, what is exercise exercise is where we get we work up a breath you know we get tired we get a bit um, you know we get a bit we build up a bit of a sweat we need to do 30 minutes of this a day so I, I know it's it's hard for people but especially let's say a woman in a community do you, do you to show get us? out do you want to do the exercise now <laughs> <No>. okay <laughs> joking listen when you t do you yeah. do you advise at home like that yeah of course how do they, how do they respond to you like Alhamdulillah, uh, in, it's, it's in my family, Alhamdulillah, it's actually my dad <laughs> advising me. <laughs> okay. like, for example, I'll give you, he, my dad's a very good example. He didn't do so much exercise for, uh, for a long time, he's had back issues and stuff. But recently, he's found a hobby, he does cycling now. And, you know, oh, like, since he started cycling, like, Alhamdulillah, you see so much benefit. Like, uh, his weight's have decreased. Like generally, like he's become more focused on his diet, and there's so many things. And you know, like taking up these things, like cycling, um, doing things in groups, because he does it with lots of his friends. It's a social activity. He looks forward to it on the on the weekend in the days. If you try exercise by yourself, it's very hard. You yeah. know, you have to motivate yourself. But then you do it as a social thing. You look forward to being with your friends. Your friends are coming to your doorstep to go for your cycle ride. You can't say no to that. You know, like no matter how you're feeling that day, you go to it. So it's good, especially in our women, as I wanted to say, like maybe perhaps they can join classes together, you know, maybe uh, women only classes together, if, if um, you know, or maybe they can go for walks together, um, uh, proper walks every day to build up a sweat. It's important, it's so important to be fit and, exercise and healthy. Because as I say, like me and Daha, we're medical students and, and we spend time on the wards and it's, it's very sad, you know, we see it's true. people from our community, 20, 20s and the 30s, having heart attack and stroke. It's not, it shouldn't be like this, you know, like, like our health is an amana am upon us, you know, so, uh, and you know, inshallah, like our exercise, our health, our, um, you know, uh, diet, if we try to make changes and we have the intention, of, you know, I, I want to improve my health, so um, I can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. I want to improve my health so I can worship Him for longer. I want to improve myself so I can be around for longer and I can support my family. You know, we have these noble intentions when we do these things. Then also, inshallah, like our, what we do will be an ibadah for us, you know. We'll be rewarded for what we do. So on top of that, there's another benefit is that, it, as you say, like there's a big problem in mental health and stuff. Yeah. Having, being healthy and doing a mental, um, you know, being healthy and doing exercise is so good for us, like uh, our mental health, you know, decreasing depression, our mood, making us feel good, and just being, like, I've seen so many benefits, like, even, yeah, you, can you Can you encourage your uh, grandmother and granddad <laughs> to do that? Or they already you do try, that? You try, you try, but, okay. you know, yeah, alhamdulillah, so one thing I'm, I'm, I'm just before we go, we're going to really yeah, finish sorry. and we'll wrap up, inshallah. You know, I, I find it really strange uh, uh, that Muslim communities as a whole, yeah. that we don't express the love we have for our parents mm -hmm. or mm. someone does something good for you. We you can't say in the face. You're right. Why can't we do that? Like you see in other communities, or even if they go to schools, they will say, Mom, lovely you, this and that. Yeah. We can't even say, why, why can't we do that? Don't we love our parents or don't we love these things? Yeah. Yeah. You got a minute. How do you how do you respond? You got a minute. Come on. Can you say it openly? Uh, can you say you love your uh, parent directly? Yes, I love you. Well, <laughs> 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 it's becoming a challenge now. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. Um, I mean, I think in our community, you know, you try to be, you know, you try to be. What, what don't we change them then? Forget about anyone doing it or not. That's, what am I going to do? You're right, even Islamically, it's, it's important to show love this to This is a dawah. This yeah, is a very course, good dawah to do. Important. Positive dawah. Express that. your love, of course. You know, it's good to why share. Why? Maybe Daha can explain why. Yeah, so got to Before we go to, uh, from you, actually, um, would you like to say anything to your grandma and granddad? Because you actually living their dreams. Would you like to yeah. say anything to them and say <laughs> your last message? Uh, say something that you, they will be proud of. Come. Okay. Uh, like, uh, so <laughs> they speak English or they? You? I don't know. No, that's the easiest. Question. No, no, no. Like. Say it in okay, your language. I'll say it, okay. In your language. Like my grandparents, it can be the same with lots of people in their family. Like, they're, they're such an inspiration to all of us, you know? They've come to this, they've come to this country. Like my grandparents are the first generation here. And I'm sure it'll be the same for lots of people. They've come to this country without much. They're the ones who put all in, in all the hard work. They've the, they're the people who, you know, they've spent so much time and effort to build something for us. And you know, like maybe I'm not grateful enough, and my myself, we're not grateful enough. But 
the amount of work they put in to make our lives easy, to give us a better life, like may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them abundantly. Amen. 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 You know, Amen. It's, it's, Thank yeah. you my brother for your time and everything. I'd love to see you again, honestly. You've been <laughs> honest and you've been amazing actually. Jazakumullah khair. Um, to you, my brother, Twaha is a beautiful name, honestly. I must say, Twaha is a very uh, um, rare name, actually, to be honest with you, and um, very interesting. Um, what would you say to, just like I said to him, actually, we don't appreciate, um, appreciate uh, our parents or the loved ones that do good for us. What would you say to them? It's you could say directly to them, honestly. Um, I guess just to show my appreciation and thanks not just to my parents but also my brothers <coughs> who looked after me all these years encouraging me to pursue the career that i wanted to go into all this time i can only just say you know thank you and i love you for all the support that you've given me okay. and sometimes and i do this a lot as well like i'm, I'm guilty okay. of not showing my love often to my parents and i find it quite difficult to like show that intimacy it, it's a lot more i'm a lot more closed with my parents than i should be but I do understand that we should encourage this a lot more in other families, especially with the South Asian community. There's, I'd say it's almost like a taboo to like show love mm. to our parents in that way, hugging and kissing them and whatnot. Mm. But I think having that encouragement is quite important for us, especially because sometimes what can happen is with our community, we can be too closed up and not show any love at all. And that's like going towards the complete opposite spectrum of what we should be doing as Muslims. And so just for me to try and you know appreciate oh, what yeah. i've done would like to just to appreciate what my brothers and my parents have done i could just say you know thank you for all the time and effort that you've put and may allah reward you for, for everything that you've done um, that's what i have for your time my brothers um, uh, honestly that's what i actually i tell my friends everybody loves everybody but it's just to say it yeah open up to it and it makes the difference you know? yeah. especially like you, you like so we are very closed we need to open up mm. it's in our heart we just need to say it is well. yeah. your brothers and sisters um, we've been with you for a long time and if you said anything wrong, please do forgive us. And um, if you said anything right, please try to follow, it's important. Uh, we'll miss the, uh, the other groups, mashallah, the sisters are not here today, inshallah. hopefully in the future they will come and then we'll share their success as well. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to share as well. You know, like a brother and a sister, they're studying together and they're doing amazing things. And we need to appreciate them as well. And um, we won't make mistakes, you know. So we need to look into a, a brighter future, inshallah. So if we said anything wrong, please do forgive us. And of course, like them, I love my mom and everybody in my family, my kids and my wife, inshallah. May Allah bless them. Jazakum Allah khairan for being with us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.